Listen up, trophy hunters, because I've got a story for y'all. This might be a new depth to my depravity. It's certainly an example of how insane I can be while gaming. This is the story of how I got the platinum for I was a teenage exocolonist. I was a teenage exocolonist had a lot of things going against it right from the beginning. I consider myself a pretty patient person when it comes to video games. I don't scream or yell, I don't hit the table, I don't throw controllers, but I had some rough indie experiences going into this one. Cult of the Lamb not only had an impossible platinum at launch, but I also had a game-breaking progression bug that prevented me from even going into the second area. While Midnight Fight Express wiped my trophy progress twice and also had an impossible platinum, even if you could trick your progress into saving like it's supposed to. I really needed a game with a platinum that was just going to be possible. But I'm my own worst enemy, because instead of doing a tried and true AAA game that I knew for sure could be completed, I went trolling around the new section of the PSN store again. Exocolonist is mostly a visual novel, it's not my usual genre, but it had cards, which made it an instant buy, without even reading the trophy list. The story starts on the colony ship that you've lived for your entire 10 year old life. After some quick character creation questions, the ship passes through the warp knocking you unconscious. You awaken on the new planet ready to start your formative years. The game is quick to inform you that it will end after 10 more years and you better spend that time wisely. Each month you can participate in an activity or a job. Most of the time this will raise one of your stats. Each stat grants you up to three different abilities. The abilities make the card challenges easier or unlock new mechanics that you can take advantage of. The card challenges themselves are pretty bare bones and overall uninspired. It essentially boils down to play your best cards in the right order to get the highest score. You get bonuses for straights, pairs, and flushes, but for the most part, the best hand is almost immediately obvious. Especially since at the start of the game you only draw 5 cards and can play all of them. It does get slightly more interesting as you start to gain more card draw and get to make more meaningful decisions in your card plays. There's also harder challenges which give you 3 rounds to reach a massive total. But overall, if you're looking for a great card game, this isn't it which means that Exocolonus succeeds or fails with its plot and its characters. It's a coming-of-age story, and not just for the protagonist, but for all of the kids around you. Reading around on forums, it seems like everyone who plays the game can find someone to relate to. For me, it's certainly Tangent. She's not just one of my favorite characters in this game, but she's up there for one of my favorites of the whole year. She isn't just smart, she's driven, and her frustration with her limits and the human condition in general is just so raw and real and engaging. But as much as this is a story of life and growing up, it's also a story of loss. Just like real life, people can die unexpectedly. All of these are pretty gut-wrenching, but they also illustrate a core feature of Exocolonist. Repeated playthroughs are canon, so on those successive playthroughs, you will unlock new dialogue choices. Your character knows what's coming for the colony, and you can make critical changes to steer the people in the right direction. There's also options to skip dialogue that you've already seen to make later playthroughs go much faster as you get to the new content that you're really looking for. Which is fortunate, because Exocolonist has one of the nastiest trophy grinds that I've experienced in a long time. Let's start with every possible you for getting all 29 endings. Yeah, pretty much 30 endings. We gotta break them down a little bit. Eight of these endings are special endings, and they have unique requirements. You can achieve these from specific decisions that typically result in the game ending a little prematurely. All of these endings are great, and I completely recommend a full new playthrough for all of them. The other endings are terrible wastes of your time. These are career endings, and are based on which activities you did the most, and which skills are the highest. With some very careful planning, you can make saves throughout the game while evenly splitting your time between a few select activities. While this can reduce the 22 playthroughs a little bit, you're going to be buried in a spreadsheet, keeping track of every activity you're doing rather than really enjoying the game and living with the characters. And the endings themselves are kind of… like nothing? Like they're just congratulations, you're a writer now, and that's it. 
It's a really weird decision, because there's an epilogue for each of the side characters, but there's no trophies tied to the different paths that they can take. That's where the real emotional payoff is, and I wish there was a different decision here for the trophies. But the length of time to achieve these endings don't have anything on Collect Them All for earning every card in the game. While the card game isn't all that great, the cards themselves are actually pretty interesting. Each one is tied to a memory, so you'll add cards to your deck from having new experiences, and this works really well. Each of the jobs and activities have unique cards, so over time, your deck starts to represent your life and who you are. Exocolonus is also the most generous game ever when it comes to save scumming your decisions. Most of the times you can see card rewards for specific decisions before you even make one. If you save before making the decision, you'll be able to reload immediately and get credit for both cards for the trophy. But with 276 cards, you're still bound to miss a few. Some are hiding in random events, some require failing card challenges instead of succeeding, some key off of other events that need to be completed in specific ways. By the end of my 30 playthroughs, I was still missing about 10 to 15 cards that I just couldn't figure out how to obtain. So I had to brave the developer discord to see if anyone knew the whereabouts of these cards. And while nobody there could point me in a good direction, people were talking about accidentally finding the developer console. Unfortunately, this only worked on PC, like usual, and couldn't be opened on the console. Am I prepared to admit that I bought the game a second time on PC in order to potentially get the first Platinum on PlayStation by getting the missing information that I needed through the PC developer console? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. You, you can make fun of me. Using the developer console, I was able to see the card art, which let me find a few of the missing cards. But there were still a few that eluded me. Which brings me to maybe the most intense thing I have ever done for a Platinum Trophy. Listen, there's working hard for Platinums, there is grinding away for Platinums, but have you ever unpacked the game files in order to look at the code to find out how to trigger a Platinum Trophy? People were getting worried about me. Looking through the files, I could find the card table so I could map my missing cards to the game's ID for them and search for them more effectively. I was able to find triggers for most of them, but I also identified four remaining cards that I believed were unobtainable due to bugs in the game. Commanding and Leaping were only obtainable through gym upgrades, a feature that wasn't working at all at launch. This was a known bug that the developers were already actively working on. A Beautiful Vista was identified in the card table as being available in a specific event, but looking at the code surrounding that event, it all pointed to it's all too beautiful instead. This seemed like a pretty easy bug, as the ID for the card that I needed was Beautiful Vista, and the ID for the card reward was just beautiful. The last one was Tracking the Air Squid, which seemed to be the reward for an event chain of four events. I was able to trigger the first event in the series, but looking at the second event, it had an impossible start condition and wasn't ever going to be triggered. Let's get real for a sec. I play a lot of indie games. Part of that deal is you're going to encounter a few bugs. These are small teams, sometimes as small as one person, who work really hard to get a product out into the world. It also shouldn't be a surprise that most of these teams don't really give a shit about trophies. So when you send a support email to a developer where you pretty much say, hey, like, I really like your game, but your Platinum Trophy is bugged, here's what I think I'm doing right, and it's not happening, you're lucky to hear back anything at all. And even if you do, it's not always nice. But I did contact the team for Exocolonist. I drew attention to the cards that I believed were bugged, explained why I thought they were bugged, and mentioned that it was blocking me from obtaining a Platinum Trophy. I mean it when I say that this was the best response I have ever received. I just wanted to make note of it because the team did a fantastic job here, and when compared to other experiences I've had, Finji and Northway Games were top tier when it comes to user support. But I think this whole experience came at a greater cost to me. In the past, when I've said that a Platinum Trophy can take away from, or even ruin an experience with a game, I've meant that there's an excessively long grind, or there's frustrating trophies that take away some of the fun. The Platinum in I Was a Teenage Exocolonist didn't take away from the fun, it took away from the soul of what made the game special. Between the endings and the cards, I stopped thinking about the characters and the story, and only thought about the game in terms of numbers, triggers, and code. Exocolonist is a beautiful story about growing up. I think back over 30 playthroughs to that very first one, to this character that resonated with me in a way that so few characters do. And I think about the second playthrough, how cool it was to be able to save characters I didn't even realize could be saved. 
and to then have them have their own arcs and stories that just weren't possible on the first go around. Then I think about how stupid I've been to make all of that mean less to me. A Platinum Trophy should add to the experience of the game, not subtract from it. And while I think that all of these playthroughs and all of these cards would hurt anybody's experience, other people won't take it nearly as far as I had to. Nobody, not guide writers or forum posters, has hurt my experience with I was a teenage exocolonist more than I hurt it myself. Now on the other side of the Platinum, I'm offering a very rare score for me of play the game, but don't get the Platinum. Or maybe I'm just bitter because in the months waiting for the patch, somebody else finished the endings just a few days before the patch came out and then snuck in and got the Platinum Trophy a few hours before me. Maybe it's like 50% but heard about that and missing the first platinum and 50% I ruined it myself. Like 60-40 tops. <laughs>